Hello friends, I'm the Reverend Terry Peterson, Minister of St. John's in Gurik. Today is Thursday, the 24th of March. It is five o'clock, so it's time for some wine and the word. Today here in the manse, that's gin and Jesus, just a wee drink um, at the end of the day today as we transition from one part of the day to the next. And I hope that you are ready to do that yourself. Like it's been kind of a long day for some of us and um, maybe for you. And it's time to move on into the evening, whatever the evening is going to hold. So we always begin by sharing a little bit of our lives together by way of talking about or thinking through the high points and the low points of our day. Maybe those are moments when you really felt like you were doing the right thing and you were just absolutely like close to God and on top of your game and like um, it was a really sort of spiritual experience or maybe for some of us it was just, um, you know, the, the best, like happiest part of the day. So whatever that is for you, like take a moment to think back over that and we give thanks for those high points of the day. Mine today I think is probably... Um, the number of times I got to sit with groups of children at the Easter Code today, um, teaching them about Passover. And as part of that, we recite together the Hebrew prayer for the breaking of bread. And today I had a lot of kids who were really careful about saying the words correctly, like they repeated just what I had said and they did it really well. And I hope that they remember some of that um, feeling of praying in Jesus's language and in the language of God's people for so many years. And I hope they remember that feeling of blessing bread and breaking it and sharing it, passing it around the table. Um, the low point of my day, like definitely the moment that I thought, sort of what what am I doing here and why and can I go back to bed um, and start over is at the end of one of those groups that came around to my station during the Easter code. Um, it had already been a little bit of a difficult group. We'd had some um, disrespectful moments in the course of our 10 minutes together. And then at the end, um, this girl sort of stood up and walked over me before the rest, before I sort of explained how we were going to go about the end of our time. And I said to her, like, it's not time to leave yet, but okay, like, thanks for walking right over me. And she burst into tears right outside of my gazebo. So I made a girl cry today. And that was not the high point of my day, I have to say. So whatever your high points, your moments of feeling close to God and like really in the zone, or your low points might be, even if you made somebody cry today, I hope that you will share those with someone. Sharing our lives together is how we build up the body of Christ. Today, we are going to talk a little bit about part of the passages that come in between last Sunday's reading and this coming Sunday's reading. So last Sunday, we read about Jesus washing the disciples' feet and Peter not wanting to do that, like he wanted to be able to wash his own feet. And we talked about the voice of self-sufficiency and how seductive it is, and it calls to us and lies to us all the time. And Jesus tells us to look out for each other, meaning that sometimes we have to be willing to be served and other times to serve. Um, this coming Sunday, we're going to skip ahead. So that was John chapter 13. We're going to skip ahead to chapter 18. And in between, in chapters 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, is what's called Jesus's farewell discourse. So it's when he's talking to his disciples for five chapters, um, all the sort of last minute things that he wants them to know before he goes into the passion, like before he's arrested and crucified. So... Um, he teaches them in chapter 13 about being betrayed and about um, loving each other. And then he predicts that Peter is going to deny him. And then he also talks about going ahead and they know the way because he is the way, the truth, and the life. 
He talks a lot about the Holy Spirit who will be coming to remind us of everything that Jesus has taught us. And then we come to the bit that we're going to read today, which is from chapter 15. Um, and then after this part, Jesus and the disciples go to the garden where Jesus does not um, pray like we experience in other gospels, passion narratives, where he's like really struggling with what he has to do. Instead, he prays for his disciples and for all his followers that they may be one and may experience the Holy Spirit and follow him faithfully. So um, in between, we get this bit of chapter 15 that we're going to read. And I'm reading today from the Common English Bible, but I am going to change one word because I don't think this particular word is translated really properly anywhere. So wherever the Common English Bible says remain, the Greek word is abide. And John has been using the word abide, like Jesus says, abide with me, in me. They abided with him, all of this, like all throughout the gospel. And it's a really important word. So every time I say abide, that's an important word. Um, but if you were reading along at home, then you might see that it says remain. But those, that's a translation choice that I think the Common English Bible translators got wrong in this instance. So um, I'll be correcting it as I go. <laughs> so this is the beginning of chapter 15. Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that do not produce fruit. And he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I will abide in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself but must remain in the vine or abide in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't abide in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way prove that you are my disciples. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. So that is quite the um, instruction that we are supposed to abide in Jesus as if we are the branches that are attached to the vine and to bear fruit for God's kingdom and to love each other as Jesus has loved us because he chose us. Like we didn't choose him, he chose us. So that's a lot. That's just a lot to think about. It's a lot to do. Um, it's a lot to keep in mind and also to practice because you'll notice he says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. So the way that people will know that we are the friends of Jesus is that we follow his way, that we live the way that he lived and that we hang out with the people he hung out with and that we do the things he would do, the things he did do. Um, not just that we think the way that he thinks or the way that we assume he wants us to think, 
There's nothing in here about how we think. It's all about how we live, how we abide. So um, I love this passage because it reminds us that we are connected to something bigger and that connection is what allows us to bear fruit. And I particularly love the image of the vine and the branches producing fruit because of course, this is about a vineyard, right? A grape growing experience. And grapes grow on these vines that are all twisted together, right? Uh, through a sort of arbor. And the grapes hang down underneath in clusters. And you do have to prune them carefully or else um, they don't produce good grapes. They end up like all so, um, small and sad and shriveled and disgusting. But if the vine is pruned properly, then the grapes get bigger. And so you get these beautiful bunches of big juicy grapes that are so delicious. And every time we think, oh, I don't want to let go of that thing. Like what if it's the thing that's making our grapes shriveled and horrible? But if we were to let it go, let God prune it, then we might find that our grapes are bigger and more beautiful and more tasty than ever before. And so grapes hang down there and then they have to really be harvested basically by hand. Like now there are machines for this, but um, a lot of places don't use them because they damage the grapes. So, or they can damage the grapes sometimes. Um, so people have to go in and actually pick grapes, like whole bunches of them carefully themselves by hand. And um, then those grapes have a lot of different purposes, right? Like they can become wine, they can become grape juice, they can become jam, <laughs> they can become raisins, not my personal preference. I always think raisins are a little bit like grapes that are sad, they miss their chance to be wine. Um, they can become fruit salad. <laughs> they can become a snack that you cut in half and give to the kids at the toddler group. Like there's so many options for what grapes can do. So what if we thought of ourselves that way? What if we're producing fruit that has a wide variety of uses? Like we always, I think, um, get sort of caught up on one way of being like, like if you're a church, you have to be like this or do things like this. Or if you're a Christian, you have to do this and this and not that and that. But what if everyone's fruit ends up being used for something different? Like some people are bearing fruit that would be really good for Christmas cake. And some people are bearing fruit that makes a really nice red wine. And some people are bearing fruit that makes champagne. And some people are bearing fruit that makes jam to go on your toast. And like all these other things, like all of that is possible. But it's only possible when we abide in Jesus and he in us. And like this is a twofold thing. Like it's I don't want to say it's easy to abide in Jesus, but it's certainly easy to talk about abiding in Jesus. Harder to do, but harder still is to allow pruning, right? Jesus says that the Father removes any branches that don't produce fruit and trims any branch that does produce fruit so it will produce even more. No one likes pruning because we don't like to let things go. We don't like to have bits of our self cut away. It leaves a raw edge when you do that, right? Like you cut off a bit of branch and it, you expose the inside. No one likes that. Like we, we like to keep our bark, you know, hiding our insides from the world. But when our insides are exposed like that in a way that God wants it to be, not just in a, a random way, but in a way that God knows will lead to further growth, then we are more likely to produce more fruit that God can do even more with. And this is not only true for individuals, but also for the church. So Jesus is giving us this 
poetic image that applies to us as a community and also as individual people. And I think it's important that we read it in both of those ways. So that's a lot to think about. And in the end, Jesus says, love each other just as I have loved you. Like that's what it really boils down to. There is nothing more important than to love each other as he has loved us. And that is the way that we bear fruit. And sometimes loving each other will require pruning <laughs> because frankly, sometimes we have rough edges and they need trimming down. And sometimes loving each other causes pruning, right? Like we have to let go of some things if we're going to love one another fully, if we're going to give ourselves in the service of others and in the receiving of their service, then we will have to sometimes be pruned. So that's what I've been thinking about today, this week. Um, and it will lead us on toward the next things. So I was hoping to fit in two Wine in the Word videos this week, but the Easter code has not allowed me the space <laughs> to make that happen. So um, I do suggest reading through the rest of the farewell discourse if you have a chance. And remember that John's overriding word is abide. So anytime you see it, you should really be thinking like, what is Jesus trying to get us to do to abide in him and let him abide in us? And maybe spend some time just praying about that word abide, abiding. Like what does it mean to abide together? It means to love one another, of course, among other things. So let's take a moment to pray together, shall we? Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day that you have made. We give you thanks for the community that you call together to be your body. We give you thanks for abiding with us and in us. And we pray that you would give us the grace to continually abide in you. We ask that as you prune us, as you cut off the things that are not bearing fruit, and as you find ways that our lives and our community's life might bear even more fruit, we pray that you would give us the grace to accept that pruning and also to grow joyously into the purpose that you have laid out for us. Whatever that purpose may be, we pray that we would be fruitful for your kingdom. Guide us as we love one another, as you have loved us. We ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, whose perfect love brings us into your kingdom. Amen. All right, friends, thanks for this lovely time together. I hope you have a great evening and a good weekend ahead. I shall see you on Sunday. Until then, cheers and peace be with you.